traders, welcome to our weekly analysis for December 4th to December 10th. So pretty much uh, second week of December. And uh, let's get into it. Take a look at the economic calendar first. So this week, of course, biggest news right away. You should know economic calendar wise, it's now from payroll. And of course, it should happen last week because last week technically is the first week of December. So I don't know why they push it, but maybe that's the, the way it always been. I don't know. Anyhow, aside from that, uh, first thing to understand updates, of course, if you have followed me in your social media, or if you have read news yourself, you know, the biggest news is the Republican Party had passed the tax reform bill. What had that do to the US dollar? It's a buying moment for sure. So you see, we are at the low of 92.66 for DAX and then up, down, up, down. And finally, now it seems to be breaking this 93 handle. So all in all, it's a good news for US dollar. But right now, okay, right, right now, I'm just want to remind you, I'm personally a little bit concerned. Why? Because I was hoping the price action push to 95 right away. I was hoping a huge reaction like this. And obviously that's not the case. So one thing rule of thumb to keep in mind is that if a currency in front of a good news did not react the way it should be, that's something you have to be worried. Okay, doesn't matter it's uh, fundamentally or technically speaking. Now, if you're talking about technical, if a currency does not react, okay, for example, you have a candlestick and a candlestick at a, at a resistant level. Now, if it does not react to it should be, okay, if the candlestick at the resistant level is supposed to give you a reversal to the downside, if it does not react that way, more likely means it's gonna have a breakout to the upside. So same thing works in a fundamental in an economic sense. If a currency did not react to a piece of good news in a positive way, meaning there are a lot of interesting seller and not a lot of interesting buyer. So just that's my biggest concern right now because this tax reform bill is supposed to be the best news for US dollar for 2017. And it's not really pushing dollar to the places that I want it to be. Because of that, I start having I start having a little bit doubt over US dollar just because of that one reason. And of course this week, just right now I can tell you it's exactly the same thing. It's going to be a political and geopolitical week. Although the tax reform bill has passed, but that sh didn't push US dollar anywhere. And we still have another geopolitical events happening. The Russian gate is really, really going on right now. And uh, that's really the one of the biggest negative sentiment. Uh, people might say, and oh, next week we're gonna have Federal Reserve. Yes, we're gonna have a Federal Reserve meeting next week. I think, I think it's next week. Let me double, let me, let me make sure it's next week. I think Wednesday. Yeah, we have FOMC statement rate next week. So, it's not really a big event, to be honest. Why? Because now we have over 90% probability for a rate hike already. So the events, the rate will not be important. In fact, the surprise in a, is in the downside. So unless they, doesn't, they do not hike the rate, otherwise, even if they hike the rate, you're not gonna have too much reaction. Only if the Federal Reserve FOMC can be very hawkish for next year. If they say 2018, we're going to have you know, like six rate hike, things like that, something crazy, then yes, dollar will continue to go up. But other than that, the tax reform bill should push it even, even much higher. It's not the case. So I don't wanna, you know, they be worried about that. Uh, Friday, of course, down from payroll, seems like a big event, but as many of you know, the only important data will be the average earning. 0.3% is expectation, but all in all, I don't think this event is going to be too big unless we can see something at 0 0.5 or higher. So unless you have something 0.5% or higher, not necessary to have too much reaction. And again, it's more to the downside. Okay, the surprise is more to the downside because now expectation is 0 0.3. That means if anything lower than that, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, will really drop US dollar. Okay, 
So that's one thing for US dollar. Now for British pound, of course, we open a week uh, with another rumor that they might reach a deal. Right now, they are really trying, but you have to understand it's very complicated. It's not only about Britain, right? Because Britain itself has an uh, interest and in, 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 in effect with Northern Ireland. That right now seems to be one of the key issue. Before it was the divorce fee, it's the money. Right now, if they're willing to pay that money, then the second thing is the politics between Northern Ireland and UK. Now, obviously, this is a very sensitive issue because maybe many of you may be too young to to know, but it was a big, big issue between the IRA and the UK back in the 60s, 80s, 70s. So nobody want to go back to that era. Okay, everybody is, is treating it very delicately. Of course, I don't know, but I don't think we're gonna go that kind of extreme. But just to know, that's a sentiment on back of people's mind. That's why it's a big issue between the Northern Ireland border, EU and UK, and there's a lot of other, uh, you know, uh, uh, element involved in this. So that's something you have to watch out for. British pound again, it's gonna be a geopolitical, geopolitical base currency. And uh, I do think they might reach a deal, but again, I don't want to speculate into that. So for me, not really a currency that I, I am able to trade into, okay, or even trade after, just because it's too hard to have a stable uh, path. So you can trade it, or you might be, you should be very successful trading British pound pair if you are a scalper. So if you're a scalper, day trader, this is your market, you know, up and down, up and down, it's a perfect market. And uh, what else? For Euro, again, Euro, nothing to update, it's still a neutral currency. Um, I don't really have any reason to buy or sell. For that being said, it will react purely to the counter partners. Again, Euro will react to dollar only if dollar has strength or weakness, same as Euro pound, it will only react to a strength and weakness of British pound. Aussie, yesterday we have the RBA rate statement. Really, like I said, it's not really a big event. Uh, if you took out the Aussie news you know, in like four hour chart, really nothing happened. You know, you might have this kind of drop and up. For me, it's just a sideways movement. So again, no reason to buy Aussie or sell Aussie at the moment for me, just because there's no real catalyst. Now, RBNC Spencer speaks yesterday. Now, people think he had become more hawkish than Wither. That certainly is the case because Wither had been known to be very, very dovish previously. But that alone is not going to push New Zealand anyway. Because as I mentioned, the reason people sell New Zealand dollar is the doubt over the government that they have right now. Also, RBNC, regardless of a hopeful talk, things like that, still very, very uh, in a losing monetary policy. So unless these two elements had, has ch have changed, otherwise we should still see a, a strong push down for uh, New Zealand dollar. Just give me one second. So that's pretty much it for the yesterday. Now today, of course, we open with negative service PMI. Again, this alone is not a reason. If you see British pound drop and you immediately look at a calendar saying, oh, it's because the service PMI, that's not the case. They dropped because yesterday the rumor is that they had reached a deal. They had reached a deal with EU and it turned out it's not the case because the uh, the the issue over Northern Ireland border or the, or the party in the Scotland or Ireland did not accept. Trade balance for Canada, it's again not, it's a positive number that, that alone, of course, pushed Canadian dollar up again. But the major strength was from last week, labor market and GDP. And uh, all these, you know, ISM non manufacturing GDP today from Aussie, not really a big deal. Now, of course, because it's a neutral currency. So if you have something really, really positive or really, really negative, yes, it will give it momentum. How long is that going to last? I don't know. For now, maybe hourly, hourly chart or last will be your best case. So if you want to trade this kind of economic calendar, yes, it's possible, but only trade it when you have something really outside the deviations. Wednesday, 
uh, not from payroll number. This is not that important anymore because nobody is paying too much attention to the actual job figure, right? It's all dependent on the average hourly earning. Then we're gonna have a Bank Canada event. Now, some people are still expecting a hike. It's very interesting because you still have like 25% of probability in the futures market. I really don't think they're gonna hike, right? Based on what they have been react very, very cautiously. I don't think they're gonna hike, however, because there's recent positive data, they might become a little bit hawkish. I also don't think that will be the case. I think they will just be very, very neutral. Since we're heading into the end of the year, I don't think they're gonna really give too much momentum into the market. Stability is their number one goal. That's something you have to always remember. Stability is central bank's number one goal. A good oil inventory, take a look at oil market. Ever since the reach OPEC meeting deal, double bottom, it seems like, yes, there is a pretty good support, but all in all, again, not in any way meaningful. So that does not mean it's bearish, just means that we don't have a much strong momentum. So we'll see what happened. And Thursday, don't really have much data. Drag is gonna speak, not expecting too much. And of course, Friday, now from payroll. It's tradable. I am oh, I am going to trade it if we have a deviation on average earning. Uh, but if we don't, then it's not really a big event for me to trade. I can buy or sell, right? It really depends on the average earning number. And all in all, I do have to remind you, it is still going to be a political driven market at the moment. Okay, so just take like a few charts, Euro dollar, obviously we are still in this kind of a, a shortened uptrend. If you had draw a channel here, you will see that we are breaking out. Okay, we broke down basically, broke down this channel. So technically it does look like this rally was a retracement, but that's just technically speaking. Okay, we'll see if that's the case, because again, it's very, very sensitive to the geopolitical environment. So that's the moment where a lot of technical support and resistance will be broken. British pound, obviously, if it's a retracement, it's a very, very deep retracement. Okay, I still know what's gonna happen because I don't think like no one has ever trade in this in this in this kind of event yet. Okay, the reason we can trade into or out of the catalyst, as I mentioned in the final, in the economic data, is because it's the same thing happened over and over and over again. British pound, British exit. This is all very new historically, so we don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, even if they reach the deal, there are two scenarios. If they reach a deal, you might have a buy rumor sell fact effect. That means you actually might see British pound drop. Or if they reach a deal, market become very, very happy, extremely happy, you might see a pound rally. Now, which one is gonna happen? Honestly, I don't know. It's a historical event. I haven't traded before. I don't know what's gonna happen. Because of that, I pretty much the best way to deal with it is to stay out. Now, if you're already in British pound trade like myself, obviously you can still hold it because dollars still have a strength, but just knowing that the probability for the trade has become, you know, it has decreased tremendously. And dollar yen, no safe haven currency, really nothing much happened. It does look like a good upside, uh, a retracement to the upside but be careful for any safe haven currency since we're heading into the Christmas season, there should be or there could be more geopolitical uncertainty happening in a global scale. Okay, Aussie New Zealand still a ranging bond market and uh, that's pretty much it guys. It just, I don't really see any opportunity in terms of a swing trade perspective. And again, if you want to know my individual trades, which I publish basically every day, completely transparent, and tell you my reason to hold, to stay, to manage, or to get out, I have been doing that, you know, just go to my website, go to my website, you know, sign up for the free to see that, because I don't want to repeat myself. It's just, it's, it's the same video that I do. I do a more in-depth explanation 
of my actual trade. So go to the trade section, members only. If you click in, I'll ask you to register. Just register that you can you can watch. You know, once you register, this is this is myself. If I register, I, I log in, and then pretty much you can watch. So December first was my last one. I just did the one for Tuesday. I'm gonna upload later on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this week. Very very short recap. Again, watch out for uh, a geopolitical and political momentums. And you want to get a quicker update, go to the trade updates or go to my Instagram where I do talk about the financial market as well. All right. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any question. Thank you. Bye bye.